We've learned in our last chapter how to create our objects. And we are learning in this chapter how to create an interface and uh, how to create one that will be able to show the information from our objects. Now, in this exercise, we're going to be able to see how to bring it all together, how to bind the objects that we've created in our last chapter and put them in visual format in our window. So let's go ahead and open up our exercise by going to our open project. And we're going to go to our exercise chapter 3, 0803, and go into our 0803 solution. Now what we have in here is the window that we created in our last exercise, win layer list. We also have our objects that we created in our last chapter, as well as our initialization class. We did make a slight change to our base object. Let's go ahead and take a look at that we have the ability not just to inherit, but implement certain characteristics. So one way is we inherit, we pick up all of the objects. Another is we are implementing a certain method. And so that's what we're doing here now within the base object, we're implementing the I notify property changed. What that means is if any of these properties are changed, it sends off a flag and notifies the software, hey, if something's changed, you need to update your graphics, your visual. And so we built that implementation in. As soon as we added that implementation, a new event automatically is added there. And we loop or connect to that event by creating a separate routine. And that routine requires us to feed it a string that defines what property has been changed. And then we just add for each line, whenever the value has been changed or set to raise this call this routine, and it will be what fires or tells the software, hey, something's been changed, and to, to kind of create that flag. And so we made some slight adjustments here uh, to our object, and that way we can properly use them in our windows. Now, let's go to our window here. In our Solution Explorer Windows Layer List, we are wanting to show a list of our layers. That's the name of our window after all. And uh, so we have our OK and Cancel button set up, but we don't really have a list of our layers. So just below the grid row definitions and above the stack panel for the OK and Cancel, we're going to create a list box. And I just, uh, the less than and greater than brackets, we have our list box created. And the items that are going to go into that list box, the item source is connected to the binding, the data that we're going to bind or connect to this window as a whole. Now, to control how our list shows up, it's not just one piece of text, but we want a checkbox as well as the name of our layer, and we could get even more advanced than that. We're going to kind of define a template for one of those list items, and then be used for every single item that shows up, every single layer that shows up in uh, the collection that we bind here. So we're going to do a list box item template. And I create the less than greater than close brackets. Uh, an item template needs some template object as its content. So we're going to say data template. And within our data template, we're going to create a grid. So we have the grid on the outer portion of our window, but now we're going to have another grid inside our list box to define how it's going to look. That way we can uh, control a little bit statically the checkbox is to the left and the layer name is to the right. That being the case, let's go ahead and add our columns to be able to do that. Column definition from our list. And we're going to create two columns. Column definition, width being a minimum of 10 pixels wide. And we're gonna go ahead and create another column definition with a width 200 pixels wide. Don't know if you remember, but when we created the window at the very top, the current width is 300 pixels. So we should be plenty safe with these settings here. Now that we have our columns defined, we need to go ahead and just tell the software what we want in each column. We want in our first column, less than greater than brackets, don't forget, our checkbox. And it's going to be aligned vertically, center, 
to the row and as well as horizontally center to the row. The data is going to be connected to whether or not the box is checked. So we're going to bind that to an object name or its path to the value called or a property called is selected. You remember that property in our layer object, which really is being inherited from our base object. We see the property here. So we're going to go ahead and close this. One other thing is we want to tell the software that as soon as somebody checks that box to go ahead and fire and let the code in the background know that the property has been changed. So as soon as that property has been changed, trigger an event to inform everyone that property has been changed. Now, the next thing we're going to add is a text block, just a very static piece of text that shows the name of the layer. This will show up in the column, which is really the second column, but it's a zero based index. It will also be aligned vertically in the middle of the row, but we're going to give it a little bit of space on each side here. So we're going to set some margins. We want some space to the left, so it's not right up against that checkbox. We want some space below, and we want some space above. We don't really need any space to the right. We're hoping the layer name never reaches the end of our window to the right. And so we have that set, and then we actually have to connect the text. What is the text? Well, we're binding it to the name of the layer. So we have the look and feel of every item in now our list that we are going to have show up of our layers. How do we make the layers actually show up? We, well, we said we're going to bind it so that every item in that collection, remember we created a layer collection. So in our layer object, we have one of those classes. We have a simple layer object class, but we also have another class, which is a collection of layers. And so we're going to bind that or connect that collection to this list. How do we do that? in the source code or the code behind the window. Right click anywhere and you will find view code. Let's go to the view code and you'll see, of course, our events already there for the OK and cancel button. And we want to create a some code connected to as soon as when the window is created. So when we say new window, when a new instance of this window is created, we want some code. So as soon as we choose that window layer list here and choose new from the list here, it will go ahead and add that to this portion of our class code. And it writes some of that code in there for us. You notice here it says this is required by the designer. So we don't want to write anything. We don't want to erase this code. And we don't want to write anything above this code. So notice here, add any initialization after this call. So that's what we're going to do we are going to say that our data context, the data that's connected to me, me is whatever class or object we're working on, in this case, the window layer list window, equals a layer collection. Where is that layer collection? We're going to require the user, us, to enter it when we create a new instance of this window. So it is a variable that must be fed to us. And then we just say this list of layers, whatever drawing it's from, is now going to be bound to the window. Because it's bound to the window and we use what's bound to the window here, and then we can simply call out certain properties of every object because they're bound. Now, because we changed this and said we must have this written to us, we have to change our command. So we're going to go to our initialization. We have that command that we've already written, li show layers and new win layer list, but now it's telling me I need a parameter for layers. Remember, we added that parameter when we create a new instance. Well, to feed that parameter, we're going to create a variable, and it's going to be creating a new layer object collection object. 
From that new instance, we're going to go ahead and get a collection or get a list of all the layers in the drawing. Which drawing? The current one. So we'll go ahead and host application working database and it will iterate through and find all the layers in the drawing. And this function I've created for you and is already there in the layer object. It's a great uh, opportunity for you to read what's been done, but ultimately all we did was take the database, use the database provided, create a transaction, and loop through or iterate through the layer table to find every layer object. Every layer in that layer table, we create a new layer object, provide some data to that object, those properties, and then add it to the collection. Very simple function there. Come back to our initialization. Now that we have the layers as well as something in that collection, we'll go ahead and assign that as our parameter. Let's see what happens. We're going to go ahead and debug our code. Once AutoCAD finishes initialization, we'll load our DLL. From our desktop exercise folder, chapter 8, we're going to go in the 0803 bin debug and choose my first plugin. And we're going to go ahead and uh, open up our exercise file here. So we have a few layers. So in my desktop exercise, chapter 8, you'll find an 0803 data binding drawing. And it has a few more layers than just layer 0. Let's go ahead and call our command li show layers. And you see the list comes up, center to AutoCAD, and every layer in that drawing comes up. When we check this box, it automatically fires and tells the object in the background that layer object that we created, we've changed a property there. It is interconnected to that or bound to that object. So when we click OK and we take that layer collection, we have all of those properties that have been changed in that layer collection. And we can iterate through and see, was it checked? Was it unchecked? Is it selected? Is it unselected? and we can do certain things to it then.